Are you ready to work with sellers? This is the video for you. In this short video, I am going to go over things you want to do to provide value when a seller is ready to put their home on the market. Let's get to working with sellers. So I wanted to talk to you about preparing your home for the open market. You know, and of course, I went to ChatGPT to ask it if you, you know, I asked it to update my title. So here's what we got. Let's see. Captivating buyers, secrets to making your listing market ready. Creating a desirable space, making your listing market ready. The road to a successful sale, making your listing market ready. Captivating buyers, turning houses into homes, making your listing market ready from ordinary to extraordinary. Like there's so many ways we could say this to a seller. So whether you are a, a, an agent working with a seller, or maybe you are someone thinking about putting your home on the market, or maybe you're just here because you stumbled on my YouTube channel, or you're in my membership and you're like, okay, Carrie, just get to it. Here we go. Because everybody can learn from this. Here we go. You're working with a seller. You've got the listing. They've signed all the paperwork. Or how about this? They haven't signed out. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You're working with the seller and they've signed all the paperwork. Or maybe they haven't signed the paperwork yet and you're at the pre-listing appointment and you're walking through, right? You've got your, your notebook, right? For me, it is literally a it's the listing input sheet. It's a notebook to ask questions. I have pre-written out questions that I want to know or ask the seller. So you're walking through the home and before you get started, you say to the seller, I've got my notes, let the seller know your goal is to create a dream home for a new buyer. So you're walking through and you say, okay, dear Mr. And Mrs. Seller or seller, you know, my goal is to create, help you create a dream home for that next buyer, right? There are things you're not going to like. There are things that there are things that I'm going to say and you're going to be like, you know what, Carrie, I'm not doing that. And that's OK. You know, and then I might say it might even feel overwhelming. So I'm going to create a list of things that I know you can do that don't cost you any money or anything extra. You might choose to spend the money. Then I'm going to create a list of things that I really believe that if you make these updates, it will make your home a dream for a new potential buyer. And then if I have a buyer, whether they're in my marketplace looking to buy again, or maybe even rent again, or they're moving out of the area, I will say, I want you to put on the hat of you're a buyer when we walk through the house. Because if you do that, when you go to look at property, this is the same thing that's going to happen. And, I, and I've had it happen to sellers. And I've been in the real estate industry now since 1997. And we would put their house on the market. And there were things they weren't willing to do. Then we'd go look at a property and they're like, oh, this is terrible. They need to fix this or they need to do this. And oh, if it would just had this. So put on the hat of a buyer, because once you do that, Mr. and Mrs. Seller or seller, once they do that, they will then see what a new buyer wants. Now, again, there are people out there like my husband and he can just go in and buy the house. He will just go in. He doesn't care. Structure. Great. Falling apart. Still OK. Maybe not leaning, but he will still buy the house. There are some people that can see past all of it, but here's what I know. I don't care if you are someone that can see past all of it. I watch you when you go to buy. I watch you walk into the house and the house that is beautiful. It has the lemon scent from, you know, bath and body, you know, the plug in, or it smells like fabuloso, or maybe it smells like pine salt or maybe it just smells clean and then it's bright and airy and the windows are open and you can smell the outside, the fall, the spring, the summer air. And, and you're like, oh, this is it. That's what we need to do for your new buyer. Even if you know you're the kind of person that can go in and, and make it your dream home, not everyone thinks like that. So here we go. In no specific order, but this could be something you want to start with. You are going to declutter. Now I have my, my steps on how to do this and it's start by working room, room by room, pick a room, work with just that room. So, you know, if you have 11 rooms, 11 days, if you have the ability to do it that way, you know, and start with the easiest one first. And the easiest one might be the bathroom going with the garbage can through it, pull everything out of the sinks, pull everything out and just get to work. Right. I swear. I don't know what just happened.
That's right. Just get to work. Again, pick the easiest room first and get, get to it. Number two, don't go this alone. Recruit your friends, your family, go find someone to help. That's the free way. You could always hire, you know, day labor to come and help you get it done. Number three, the goal is to make your home look bright, open, and spacious. We want the buyer to see themselves in your home. So when I say you have to start decluttering, if you know you, you got a lot of purses, right? You got a lot of tools somewhere in the house. You need to start taking that out of those spaces so people can see their items in your space. So if you have 50 pairs of shoes, some of you know you have more. If you have 50 purses, you need to start taking out the items you're not using. Now, unless you're that really great influencer stylist that has everything put in a great order or it's staged, you know, it looks just beautiful. It looks like everything we see on Pinterest. I get it. I am all for less is more. And again, we haven't bought anything except you might buy some bins to start putting things away. So the other thing, you're, so you, when you declutter, when you declutter, I'm going to say this is really your number three. You're going to start packing at the same time. So number two, clean your house. Hi, I, first of all, my husband always gets mad at me. He's like, Carrie, why are you cleaning for the cleaning people? And I'm like, I'm cleaning. I'm, I'm putting things away so they can actually clean because I didn't put things away. But, you know, put things away and then hire a professional cleaning service. If you're really good at cleaning, go for it. If you're not, you can get friends and family to come help you clean, you know, order some pizza, whatever you need to do. You need to get the house clean, but it might be better to just hire someone. And, you know, and when I say declutter and clean, as your number two, bring a friend over and say, tell me about my house. What do you think? And, and own it. They're going to tell you things you don't like. They're going to say, yeah, you need to clean the stove for real. Clean the stove. If you're someone that puts aluminum foil on your stove so it never gets dirty, I'm going to need you to take that off and I'm going to need you to clean it. Right. Um, if you have pets, ask a friend and go and ask them to, you know, say, does my house smell like animal? They're going to tell you probably yes. That means the dog needs to be bathed more and you are going to go through and clean everything. The things you didn't think you needed to clean because, you know, if you put animals on the on the furniture, that's it sits in the furniture right? And people think if your house doesn't smell clean or isn't clean, they're like, oh, this is going to be a lot of work. So ask a friend, does my house smell like animal? Clean, you know, clean your couches, clean the walls, wipe them down, right? And then wash all of your comforters. I get it. Some of us have duvets and we, you know, we might take the top off of the duvet and only wash that, wash it off. Wash everything, all of it. Once I went into a property, this was years ago when I worked for another company and the house um, had at least three dogs, I, the Shaggy DA, sheepdog. And oh, I was so glad to get in the garage to smell the gasoline. That's how bad it was. There's a lot I can say with that. So please, please, please clean, 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 clean. What you think is clean, someone else might not think is clean. So if you, again, if you have pets or if you have dust, look underneath the refrigerator. I'm telling you when I go to sell my house, I'm moving out. Although I think my house looks great, but, you know, I think it looks, you know, it's clean. Number three, start packing and donating items and throw things out that you don't want to keep. Don't bring it with you. Don't have to unpack that stuff. So start packing and donating items. You could do all of this in your declutter, cleaning the house and packing. It'll actually help when you go to move anyway, you know, take a, you know, get paper and write out what's in each box and slide it in that see-through bin. Number four, if you made updates to the home, you know, you could break out a regular sheet of paper and list every update. What's the, you know, age of the furnace? What's the age of the air conditioning unit, the hot water tank, the age of the roof? Did you make any major updates? Did you pull the permits? You know, if you did or you didn't, I've called villages and I'm, you know, I call and say, Hey, I have a seller. They made some updates 10 or 15 years ago. What do they need to do? And they said, it's really between the buyer and the seller because, they didn't pull a permit. So, you know, make sure if you're someone that made renovations and you didn't pull a permit, please call your village or your city to find out the rules. Don't just go fixing things. Keep receipts of everything. Keep your permits. And you might even call the village to find out what you need to do. Hopefully they don't make you rip everything out. But when I've called, they say it's really between the buyer and the seller. So always know that. Okay. 
Number five, remove extra items from your home. Like, you know, if you have a living room set and there's just that extra rocking chair that you don't need. If there is, you know, if you have throw rugs everywhere, you'd be amazed at how much nicer your, your home looks with less in it. If you know you have a waffle maker, you've got a toaster, you've got a juicer, you've got a blender, what else? You've got the air fryer, you've got the coffee maker, you've got the espresso maker, you've got the alcohol drink maker, all the stuff is in the kitchen, plus your knives, plus your utensils, you've got extra pop, soda, all this extra stuff on your kitchen counters, it's time to clean up. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's just not working great anyway and it's just time to throw it out. Clean the counters, let this look, make the space look great. And here you're not going to like me. Real estate agents, I'm talking to you so you can know how to talk to your sellers. But if you are a seller, I need you to go in and look at your cabinets, get rid of stuff, clean them out. People will feel like it is too much for them if your house is not clean. You know, I really want to say if it's nasty. Okay, I get it. We, and first of all, I live in my house. When someone's coming over, I, I get nervous. Like, if, you know, I get nervous because you want to clean up. My goal is to, one of my agents said, Carrie, the goal is to keep the first floor clean. So if you open my front door, I want the front, the living room to always look great. The living room, the dining room, and what you can see from the front door. Uh, let's see. Number six, get rid of furniture you're not, you know, you're not going to take with. Get rid of furniture that has too much space. I had a seller once. And went to the property and the seller said, hey, Carrie, we're going to get rid of everything. And I'm like, okay, but wait a minute. Before we get rid of everything, what are you doing? They said, we're moving. We're not taking anything with. And I'm like, okay. They said, my friend's coming to get this. My cousin's coming to get this. I'm like, wait a minute. Get rid of everything. And whoever you offered this to, I need you to keep this, 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 and this. Then I used it to make their home, you know, look space, not spacious. They had a whole living room set in like a study and I moved it out. I kept the chase lounge in the study. I put a lamp up, we put a uh, side tables and then we put books up on the bookshelves and they were like, oh, we should have done this. Then I put the furniture that was in there in their family room. I didn't want them to get rid of the dining room table. I had them take a leaf out for those of you that have those tables that expand, you know what I'm talking about. And then, you know, the homeowners were like, we're gonna put in granite counters everywhere. And I'm like, you don't need to do that. Let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to paint. I want you to fix, replace all of the light switch plates and the outlet plates. Give it a nice clean look. Some people are like, oh, I don't have to do that. I can clean it. Nope. It is cheaper to go to Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot, Amazon, Ace Hardware, and just get everything new. Trust me. It'll look so much better. And then I was like, I, you know, I want you to paint the whole house. And if you're, and they were like, we're just going to replace the carpet here. I'm like, if you can not do the granite counters, I want the carpet replaced in the whole house and paint and change the light fixtures to what's new and you know and what's what people want today like what's the trend and you know what they did all of that and they still replaced the countertops it worked it really did work um so you don't have to get rid of everything because we need the house to look great no, you know, I, number 8 was paint brighten up the home if you're if your home already is you know freshly painted and looks great i get it but if you have an orange kitchen a blue living room and a yellow dining room, I mean, it, ask a friend what they think because it's not what you think and not what you love all the time that is going to make your house sell. Now, there's some houses that can be cute like that. Remember, for, number nine, first impressions are everything. When I drive up to your home, what do you think? What do I think? Put on the hat of a buyer. I was just telling my husband, we recently ran to Menards and I'm like, oh, you know, we were doing some other updates. We got busy and I have weeds on the side of the house. I'm like, can I at least give mulch in the front and put some flowers in? Like, I, I I'm truly believe that the front of your house really does matter. How many cars do you have in the driveway? That part. And then number 10, when you purchase a home, you will want the house to be perfect, even if you don't believe it. We watch you when we go to shop. So if you're a real estate agent and you're listening to this, I want you to Pay attention to your clients when you when you shop for a home. And let me just give you a number 11. Take your client out to look at new construction. Take your client out to look at a few homes, even if it's just open houses, and pay attention. When they go into a house that has an awful smell, they do, they do this. Or they walk into a house and like, yeah, no, nope, it's got the space, but it needs paint. Write all this down. 
and then t- when they see houses that are, you know, updated or they were, and I, I won't even say staged because I can stage a home with your own furniture. I can put the lights in the right places. We can open the blinds. I should have said that clean your blinds, you know, wash the drapery. I can go through a home and make it look great just with what you have, just with what you have. People need to see themselves in the space. So pay attention to your clients when you go to take them to look at new construction, because I promise you, they will tell you everything you need to know. So you can go back and say, I watched you. When you walked into a home that looked beautiful, you didn't care if the roof was old or new. You cared about, could you live in it? Although we do want the, the, the roof to be great. I watched you. So those are my tips, whether you are a seller, whether you're an agent and you're thinking about selling your home or you're thinking about working with a seller, if you do these simple things, you will have the house that sells first in any market. Price is important, but in any market, the houses that move the fastest are the ones that look the best. Don't you want multiple offers?